Okay, let's move on to another London derby. They don't like them uh, basically travelling too far over the Christmas period. It's Crystal Palace at plus 105, hosting Fulham at plus 250. You have to look straight down at the bottom and a draw is at plus 260. Fulham, double chance at minus 125. The under over is at two and a half. We're basically, it's a flip em stinch. It's over two and a half goals at uh, minus 110. The Palace score twice at plus 115. They could... They could do. They could very easily. Fulham have conceded at least two goals in eight of their last ten games. As much as maybe we've been um, surprised by how they're, you know, where they're sitting in the table. They currently sit in the top half. Surprised at maybe the amount of goals they've scored. We've we've also probably, in, on the flip side, not been surprised at all the amount of goals and chances they've they've been conceding. So yeah. Palace are uh, very competent uh, at p- potentially scoring over one and a half goals themselves at plus 115. I'm just keeping it a little bit sim- simpler here. You mentioned about the, the 50-50 on the over-unders. I think it's just a, an easy bet at over 2.5 at, at the odds at minus 110. Um, 12 of Fulham's last 13 have seen over two and a half goals. Uh, Mitrovic, obviously the star man for Fulham. I think there was... Well, from my side, certainly before the season, there's a lot of questions whether he would finally cut the mustard in the Premier League, and he certainly has. He looked very good at the World Cup, even though maybe not 100% fit. Um, and you look at the Premier League this season, it's averaging 2.87 goals per game, which is up on last season's 2.82. My only sort of uh, cautiousness here is really, obviously, these two teams, it will be the, the first game, first official game back after the World Cup. And as I mentioned earlier in, at the beginning of the show, we're always a little bit cautious uh, regarding games after international breaks. So that would be my only issue here. That is the first game back after the international break. But I just thought at minus 110, I just thought it was sort of too good to turn down. I think I think if it was you know, minus 120, minus 125, I'd swerve it. It's just, I just think it's just, it's just an out, about backable. Um, but if you were wanted to be sort of cut out the fact that you're relying on two teams, then yeah, maybe Palace at plus one one five, given that that real porousness in that Fulham backline. Yeah, and uh, this is a saying that we uh, we see quite a lot, Marco here, and that's uh, Crystal Palace plus one oh five or plus one one five to score twice. They score twice, so they win the game. And I was really tempted with the Fulham plus two hundred not to score. Okay, I'm surprised. Um, I am. I'm surprised I actually missed this match completely, to be honest. And I'd like to follow Stinch in because I think this is this is a goal-heavy game for me. And um, over two and a half goals on both teams to score is plus 120. And I'd like to. Are we expecting my... Mitrovic to play? Yeah, yeah. There's no reason why okay. he won't. Um, he's been back in training. He's been well, finished World Cup pretty early, didn't he? So, um, yeah. I mean, we we talked many times in the first 15 match days about Fulham, and I've been so impressed with their sort of change in approach from their promotion campaign to being this front foot animal now who are taking teams um, by surprise, particularly in the first sort of couple of weeks, but they've carried on that style. Uh, front foot, pressing high, attacking teams, playing quite direct. Um, it's caused many teams problems. It's caused, um, it's given us loads of entertainment, loads of goals as well. And I think they will see this as a winnable opportunity. They are above Palace in the table on goal difference. And actually, if you take out their results against the top five, Fulham have posted five wins, four draws, and just the one defeat in their 10 games against teams outside the top five in the Premier League, which is really, really saying something. And we've talked again many times about Palace. Can they be trusted at at reasonably short prices, close to even money, when they don't win enough matches under Patrick Vieira? And I think this is another opportunity to just swerve them and instead focus on the goals. Because Fulham's matches, 15 Premier League games, they've produced 50 goals. 13 of 15 have gone overs. 12 of 15 have seen BTTS. The two games that didn't go overs finished nil-nil against Wolves and Everton. But actually, if you combine the XG in both of those games, it comes to 6.12. So very, very unfortunate to see zero goals, let alone um, you know, we expected to see six in those matches. So, you know, in data terms and in sort of raw numbers, it does point towards being a, a very goal-filled game. Uh, Paris, I think, have scored in 21 of 26 Selhurst Park games going back to the start of last season. Um, they've seen BTTS in five of the last six at Selhurst Park. They've only managed three clean sheets themselves all season, kept one at Selhurst and scored in six or seven. So I think individually and collectively, both teams are much better in forward areas than they are defensively. And I think, you know, for all his um, positive approach in Patrick Vieira, I just think sometimes fielding Michael Elise and Eberetche Eze in the midfield three, um, admirable, great for us neutrals, but um, 
I think sometimes it can get them a little bit caught out and short in midfield areas. So, um, yeah, I wouldn't be back in Palace to keep a clean sheet. I think Fulham can absolutely cause some problems. And um, I think a lot of the fixtures on this Boxing Day coupon I'll be looking at as potential opportunities to side with underdogs rather than the favourites at short prices. So I wouldn't put Fulham off here at all. I think Fulham plus half a goal wouldn't be the, the worst bet, but um, plus 120 on BTTS and overs would be the, the selection here for me. And I'll make it official Both too. teams to score an over because the uh, the selection was basically just over two and a half goals. Are you going over two and a half goals or are you going both teams to score an over? Yeah, I'm chucking BTTS in as well for plus 120. And what price is that? Do we know? Plus 120. OK, OK, so you've upgraded it a bit. Let me have a little... Let me just do that for you. Plus 120. OK, I'm not going to go against you publicly, but I may well stab you both in the back by going <laughs> Palace to win to near or something when when we're not talking. Like, uh, but at least one of us may uh, win. OK, let's have a little look. Palace 3 is good for me, Flash. Yeah, I mean, again, I don't want to go against Mark O'Hare now, do I? Uh, let's have a little look at the official pits because I did leave it because I just want it to be with Palace and I still may if I ever uh, look at the lineups. Over two and a half goals at minus 110 for Stinch and uh, Mark O'Hare has gone both teams to score and over two and a half goals uh, around plus 120. Uh, plus 120, Mark O'Hare, happy with that? Very much so, yeah, yeah. 